All right, welcome back everyone to LearningSysAdmin.com. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the difference between a switch and a hub. And there is a major difference. Now, hubs used to be used everywhere, in offices, in households. Everywhere, there was everywhere where there was multiple computers, you would find a hub. Today, you find switches. And why that is, is because switches operate on layer two of the OSI model, where hubs operate at layer one. Now what that means is that with layer two, it's the MAC address layer. So this switch knows that PC1's MAC address is connected to port one. And it knows that PC2, by its MAC address, is connected to port two. The hub doesn't know that. So if PC1 wants to send a message to PC2, this hub is going to forward the packet to everything that is plugged into that hub, except for the sender. So a hub floods all the ports with that packet in hopes that one of the people that are attached to it is the actual recipient, the person who's supposed to receive that packet. Well, what we can do is we can start a simulation here. And we can show you exactly what I mean. So we're gonna send a packet from PC1 to PC2. And let's play that. So PC1 sends a message to the hub. The hub sends a message and floods it out all ports to PC2 and PC3. PC3 gets a little X. It knows it's not for it. It's not for PC3. PC2 sends back a response. And it's supposed to go to PC1, but what does it do? It's forwarded out of PC. It's forwarded out of the port zero, or excuse me, port one and PC3's port. So just to watch that again. Let's see if we can reset it. PC1 sends it. And the hub floods it out all ports. PC3 says, not for me. PC2 says, yep, and sends a message back. Then the hub needs to forward it out, or excuse me, flood it out of all ports, and PC1 and PC3 get it, when only PC1 is supposed to get it. So not only does that take extra bandwidth, because remember, you're only sent sending one packet, but the hub is sending the packet out of all the ports. So you're having more packets sent than is needed. It's also a security problem because remember, PC3 is getting all these packets that it's not supposed to get. That's bad. You know, I could be wire-sharking that or I could have some other uh, packet capturing software going and I can get that packet and see what other people on the network are doing. So with the switch, We'll send a, this do we'll do the same thing. Send a packet from PC1 to PC2. Alright. PC1 sends it to the switch. And the switch knows to send it to PC2. So the switch knows that in that packet, the destination MAC address is out port 2. PC2 sends back its response, and the switch sends it back to PC1. Now if we go ahead and erase that simulation, what you can do is in the command line of that switch, see if it updated. So in the command line of that switch, you can do enable and then you can do show MAC address table. And this is what a switch has that a hub does not. So here's PC1's uh, MAC address. Here's PC2, PC3's MAC address and what ports they're out of, all right? So it knows if a packet is destined to go to the MAC address ending in E7, it's going to send it out port two. If that responds and it's supposed to go back to this MAC address, 9B, it knows to send it out of port one. So that's the key difference between switches and hubs. Hubs will flood that packet, hubs will flood the ports of the entire hub and send that packet to everyone on that network. Where switches, they know where the computer is relative to the port numbers. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any more questions, please ask us at learningsysadmin.com or comment below on the video. Please like this video, please subscribe, and if you want more content, please visit us at learningsysadmin.com. Thank you so much, have a great day.